So it, it is my great pleasure and honor to be here to introduce our recent research works. So the topic of my presentation today is Man the Gap, learning the 3D representation from the 2D image collections. So in recent years, the deep learning has demonstrated its uh, advantage in many fields, such as the image and video understanding, speech recognition, machine translation, as well as the 3D graphics, of course. So compared to the traditional methods, the neural networks provide compact nonlinear representations and unified network architectures and training schemes for different tasks, as shown here. So for 3D graphics, the deep learning enables new approaches and solutions for shape modeling and generation, realistic rendering, character animation, and physical simulation. Despite, despite these progresses, so compared to the other fields such as computer vision and natural language processing, so if we, we look at the graphics field, the advances of the 3D deep learning is still relatively slow or behind. A key challenge of the 3D deep learning is a dimensional gap between the 3D representation and its observation. So on one side, the 3D graphics representations used to model the geometry, appearance, and the dynamics of the 3D world are always high dimensional, such as the 3D geometry, six dimensional surface reflectance data, all the 4D deformation sequences of the closed mesh or other human characters. So on the other side, the imaging devices are always 2D or even 1D, and the data we can directly acquire from the 3D world is the 2D prop projections of these high dimensional functions. So this dimensional gap result in a set of blocking issues for 3D deep learning, such as the diverse and irregular 3D representations, small data 3D data set available for the network training, and difficult data labeling. So a natural question is that, so whether we can bridge this gap, in other words, can we directly learn 3D representation from the 2D image collections? If we could do this, we can get lots of benefits from the huge amount of image video data set in computer vision field and learn the high quality 3D representation from the realistic image captured from the real world. However, this is also a very challenging task. So obtaining the 3D representations from the 2D images is a well-known ill post in worse rendering problems. So researchers in the vision field or in the graphics field have worked in this area for more than 30 years and still cannot get a good solution. So our task is even more challenging than the 3D construction or inverse rendering because the images in many, many cases are captured from different objects and we do not have multiple views of uh, one object in the image collections. And also in many, many cases, we do not have correspondence between these images and also sometimes the lighting is unknown. So to tackle this challenge problem, researchers have developed a set of methods. We classify these approaches into the two groups. So the learning by reconstruction or synthesis or learning by discrimination. The first set of methods try to learn 3D representation by reconstruction. So the general idea is to regress the 3D representation from 2D images so that the rendered images of the learned 3D representation match the input real images. The key technical challenge of these methods is to solve the ill post inverse rendering problem with the limited amount of the labeled data. In particular, the images and their underlying ground truth 3D data always is not available, especially the underlying ground truth 3D data. Yeah. So the second set of methods, I named them as a learning by discrimination. So these methods try to learn the 3D representations from the 2D image collections by discrimination. So the basic idea here is to learn a 3D generative model from the 2D image set. So if the images rendered by the generated 3D representations cannot be distinguished from the real images, then we assume or we regard the learned 3D representation is the correct one. 
So the key challenge of this method is to minimize the cortical gap between the synthesized image and the real ones and preserve the 3D consistency of the learned GAN models. Note that this task somehow is different from the traditional GAN for the 2D image generation, just because in the traditional GAN, always we, 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 got, we try to train a GAN only for 2D image generation, and the data set is only also the 2D image. And for although it can generate a high quality result, however, this GAN method cannot make sure the generated image will preserve the 3D consistency, which means when you rotate the head and try to gather the head from other viewpoint, it will be a different head. You cannot gather exactly the same head or same face. Yeah. So in the past several years, our group has done some explorations along these directions. So in the following part of this talk, I will introduce two works we have done in these two categories and describe how we solve the key technical challenges in each work. So the first work is the self-augmented SVBRD of modeling. It's method try to learning from by reconstruction. So the goal of this work is to develop a convolutional neural network that can automatically generate the material maps from a single texture photograph downloaded from the internet or or captured from the real world and avoid the tedious manual work always done by the artist. So specifically, given a photo of the flat real material surface as shown below, and we want to generate the diffuse color map, bump normal map or the geometry details and the specular parameters for the whole map so that the material can be mapped on other 3D surfaces or shapes and can be rendered under the normal lightings. So the work was done by the Xiao Li, Yue Dong, Peter Pierce, and me, and has been published in the SIGGRAPH 2017. So the key challenge here is still solve the EU post problems there. And there are three, three challenges. First, as we discussed before, is that always for the material maps, if you want to get it, we don't have sufficient number of the ground truth material maps and the image layer. That, that's very clear just because if we already have many, many ground truth material maps, we need them to do this task, right? So always the real case is that we don't have so many or large amount of ground truth material maps and they are rendered images for us to do the training. And the second thing is that when you want to try to derive the material maps from one input image, it's a, always a yield post problem, which means one input can result in different materials, maps, results there, all can be rendered to the same input image. So we need some priors of the SVBRDFs or lightings to do that. However, different from other cases, such as the 3D phase or, or bodies, we don't have the generic prior model of the SVBRDFs or the surface reflectance. Layer. And the last thing is that given this input image, we don't have any knowledge about the lighting of the input image, which means we cannot use people who call the self-supervised learning approach to do that, which means people only scout the input image. And when you got, if you know the lighting, when you got the result surface material maps, you just render the surface material maps to one image with the known lighting then you make sure the rendered image should be same as the input image. But here, the lighting is unknown, so we cannot do this self-supervised way, yeah. So to tackle these challenges, so we have some key observations. So our key observation is that although the labeled data, which means the image and the layer ground truth material maps are difficult to collect, fortunately, it's easy to obtain a lot of unlabeled images such image could be collected either from internet search or from some previously released data set, for example, the Conair open surface data set. Moreover, for this single image material modeling problem we want to solve, we actually have a well-defined or well-known, well-developed inverse mapping, which means the rendering. So our task, note that our task is getting the appearance of surface reflectance map from one single image, but if we given the material maps, 
we can render out a very realistic image, which is our input by the rendering. Yeah. So based on the two observations, we have several key ideas. The first one is that to solve the data problem, we want to use a small set of images with the ground truth material maps and a large amount of unlabeled image for this training task. And then the second thing is that for the general prior models of SVBRDS, we don't have this. So we want to use the CNN models, the neural networks during the training as a prior of the SVBRDFs for this precise. And finally, although the lighting of each unlabeled image is unknown, and we cannot use a self-supervised way for the learning. Now, so we suggest we, we try to use unlabeled or the real input image for data generation, which means we want to use it to generate some material maps, but not for the loss functions. And based on these key three ideas and our key observations, we design a self-augmented CNN training scheme that use both the labeled data and the large amount of unlabeled input to train our network with the help of the rendering precise. So here is the details, let's say. So in particular, we first start from the supervised training with a few labeled data, which means the input image and the layer ground truth surface material maps. So of course, few labeled data is not enough for training this task. So our several epochs, our several iterations, we obtain the initial CNN models. Given one labeled input image without ground truth appearance, we feed it into the network and got the predictions. Note that this prediction, although it is a material map, it's not the ground truth material of the input image because the network still have errors, right? The network still bad. However, remember that our key observation is that we have the render as a known inverse mapping. So given this predict material surface maps, material maps, we could render a new input image using the predicted material data under some synthetic lighting or the real environment lighting we captured from the real world, which is much easier to obtain it. So since the rendering is a ground truth precise, we actually got a new pair of the training data with the rendered image as the input and the predicted appearance as the ground truth. So we use these pairs generated by current car convolutional neural networks as the labeled training data for the training and update the same models. And we repeat these three steps until the same training is converged. This is the pipeline of our self-augmented training. We call the self-augmented training since the data is generated with the network itself on the fly during the training process. So here we compare the result generated by the CNN training with our self-augmentation scheme and the CNN trend without self-augmentation. So for the input image on the left, the first column shows the result diffuse map and the last column is the image of the material rendered under new lighting conditions. The third row is the ground truth and the first row is our result generated by our self-augment training and the second row is without self-augmentations. So you can see that our self-augmented scheme using the information in the unlabeled data and get better CNN models. Without self-augmentation, the prediction will have artifacts such as the burn spot in the diffuse textures and show in the box and a significant large specular layer. So here we show more results generated by our scheme such as wood, metal, and plastic. Yeah. So here we show some uh, follow up works. So after we got this work, we also publish another paper to discuss. So in this work, we still need some ground truth material maps, capture material maps, and real images. So the question is that do we really just need this realistic material maps to capture from real world? So our following up work shows that actually it's not. So we can use some synthetic rules to generate some synthetic material maps and for this training, so totally avoid the real captured material maps for this training process. And later, and based on the idea, we also develop a more general deep learning based approach 
for SABRDF estimation and published in SIGGRAPH 2019. Yeah. So we, we just introduced how we use the learning by reconstruction framework to do the SVBRDF modeling. Now, the second work I want to introduce is a learning by discrimination method named the generative radiance manifold of gram for 3D aware image generation. So the goal of this project is to generate in 3D neural radiance field, or we call the nerves of the object in a class from their 2D image collections. So as shown here, the input is a collection of the 2D images. Each one might be captured from the different object instance, such as in the face case, it's a different identity. The output of our method is a GAN model or the generative models that can generate nerves for rendering high quality 3D consistent images from different viewpoints as shown on the right. You can say that for these people, for each identity, if we render it from different viewpoint, this image are really consistent and realistic, just like it's rendered from the true ground truth 3D real models. So before we go into the details of our method, let's first check the related works and figure out the key challenges in this task. So the core representation of our method is the neural readings field or called the nerve, which models a 3D object with a file readings five-dimensional readings volume of the density and the view-dependent color defined at each point in the 3D space. So given a nerve, we can generate the image for a specific view where traditional volume rendering by integrating the transmit and the color along each ray and by sample this volume with a set of points. So the original nerve proposed and published in the ECCV and the, it's a great paper and the original nerve is reconstructed from the multiple view image for one object. So it's a original nerve is designed for reconstruction task. So here we want to apply this repetition for generation tasks, which means we want to use it as output of a generative models and use for generation. So for this one, we need to solve the two problems. So first, the computation and memory cost of the nerve for GAN training is extremely large. So as shown here, to train a GAN for generating nerve that can render an image, for example, the 256 by 256 images, we require about 24 gigabytes of memory for training and lots of sampling point in the volume so that we can get a good, good enough result. Otherwise, we cannot get it. And one key point here is that for discreters, we need to render the whole image for the, this task. But for NERF, for reconstruction tasks, for each image, we only need to render a sparse of viewpoints or sparse of pixels that good enough for us to do the IL2 comparison and do the training task. So for again, we need more all the rays and thus as a result, we need more memory and computation cost. And also, as you can see in the below, when we render the nerve, we always use the Monte Carlo sampling, which means some randomly sampling patterns along each ray, and which result in the details losing and bring some noise in the result shown below here. So the key challenge here is that how to achieve the high quality generation and preserve the 3D consistency in the final rendering. And to solve this, you know that some existing works such as the PyGAN directly use the nerve for GAN training, which keeps the 3D consistent, it's very good. But however, they cannot solve the computation and memory problems and the result quality is very low as shown on the left. And as shown other methods, First, train a low dimensional nerve and then have sample the rendered image with the convolutional neural networks, such as the giraffe. Although this method can generate high resolution results, the 3D consistency, unfortunately, is lost. And we can see here the result. Later, we can also do some comparisons. You can, you can see the result. And the key idea of our method is to define the nerve only on a sparse set of manifold surface 
but not a full volume. In this way, we still use a volume rendering for image generation and avoid the view view consistent issues caused by the image convolution or image upsampling here. As shown here, the sparse manifold is defined in the volume, and this sparse manifold surface greatly reduces computation and memory cost in nerve training and rendering. And also, the rendering is still the volume rendering in the object space, so it keeps or preserves view view consistency here. So based on these new representations, we develop our solution as shown here. So we train a network M to obtain a distant field. So this distant field define a sparse set of surface manifold, where the ISO surface in the defined predefined threshold in the distant field. So the manifold, this set of surface manifold is shared by all the nerves generated by the GAN. So the phi network is a, a generative network, which generates a nerve defined on manifold from an input latent vector Z. So given each Z, we will generate a nerve for each identity. Yeah. During the rendering for each ray, we compute the intersection point between the ray and the manifold surface. You can see here. And given recasting, given each ray, we, we first got a lot of intersection point, their coordinate. Then we send the coordinate into the generated nerve here to assess for each point, we got layer density and the color values. So after that, we do the volume rendering and accumulate all the colors together according to their density and the transmit, transmittance. And then we got the final image. Then for the, for the training, we use a discriminator loss here as a traditional GAN to compare do uh, the classification between the generate rendered image and the real image set. And after that, we train the whole this GAN network, then we got the result. So you can see our paper later for the, all the details here. So here we show the image rendered from NERF generated by our method. And let me see. Okay, now I can play it. You can, you can see the result generated by our method. And also if you, you look at it carefully, you can see like the hair, the parallax caused by the hair, and uh, even the glasses, you can see that the parallax is really correct. And also the image quality is very high and it preserves all the details. And for different views, it generally really realistic result and preserves the 3D consistency. Here, if you look at the whiskers of the cat, it generates really correct parallax. And here we compare our results with the previous work. The first result you can say is a graph, giraffe, and the pygan. And you can see that the layer preserve, layer result preserves the 3D consistency, but the render quality is really low. For the giraffe, although they can generate a high quality result for each image, however, they cannot create, preserve the view view consistency. As shown here, you can see the cat model, cat image, and the giraffe generated here. And you can see our results. Yeah. So here we, we show 3D shapes extracted from the generated nerve here. Although our method is not used to, for the 3D reconstructions, but you can see that our nerve actually well recover or, or preserve the 3D details, shape details, so that the rendered image can preserve all the parallax and 3D effects here. Yeah. So here we show some quantitative evaluations as the FID scores and KID scores, and we compare our method with other methods. The traditional style GAN too, and still generates the best result because they are only targeted to the 2D image generation. 
So they don't have this 3D consistency other things. For other 3D aware or used to generate the 3D representations for image rendering, such as giraffe, pagan, and uh, giraffe, and our method, you can see that generates much better results than layers with a better FID score and KID scores. Yeah. So this work is published in the in the CAPR as a as a oral paper this year. And here we show the more results. And after this work, we also try to extend this work to further improve the resolution image resolution generated by our method here. We call the Gram HD, and now this paper is uh, already put in the archive. So you can say, let's make me show the result here. Okay. It seems like the video still has some problem. Maybe I can show later. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So in conclusion, I think I, I just showed two research works to demonstrate that we can use the 2D image collections, it's possible to use the 2D, 2D image collections to learn in the 3D representations. So I think the learning 3D representation from 2D image collections is really, for me, is really promising solutions. And uh, the, the good thing is that I believe that by developing this method, we can totally solve the data problem in 3D learning. And so that, and also we can connect in the two image and the video learning tasks with the 3D learning task, just because if we all of us just use the 2D image or the video data for the learning, then a lot of method people developed for the 2D image and the video learning task can be leveraged, can be used for our 3D learning tasks. And also, I'm really interested or very excited about, about this 3D learning by discrimination method. I think it provides a new method or paradigm for the 3D reconstructions. So traditional, you, you know, like in the computer vision, we have the multiple consistency to do the 3D construction. We always have the shape from shading to do the 3D constructions. But here is a totally new setup, which means for each object instance, we only have one image. But after we have an image collection of the object in one class, it's still possible for us to do the 3D construction for each object in the class. Yeah, but on the other hand, I think on one hand, I, we, we can say here is that the learning 3D repetition from 2D commission is very promising. But on the other hand, I would like to say, and learning 3D repetition from 2D image collections is still a very open problem. There's still a lot of challenges here. For example, how to develop other and supervised or semi-supervised method for learning by reconstructions where very, very limited uh, 3D data or even without 3D data, how to develop it is still unknown problems. Now people have some schemes for the material maps as shown here, or for the, for the face data. And for general 3D shapes, how to do this way is still unknown. And the other things is that I just mentioned that the 3D learning by discrimination is totally a new way for the 3D construction. However, the theoretical foundation behind it is still unclear. For example, we want to know how many images do we need it? so that we can do this 3D learning or 3D reconstruction by discriminations. And in what conditions we can do this, or in what conditions we will fail, right? And for each, which class we will success, definitely. And for which class or what shape representation or what shape distributions we may fail or we cannot recover that, it's still unclear. And the other things is that it seems that we have now we have two approaches. It's one called the learning by reconstruction. We use L2 reconstruction laws. One is the learning by discrimination, which means we use a discriminator or gain loss to do this training. So the relationship between these two and how to combine them together for the learning, the 3D representation learning is still a clear problem. It's worth us to do more investigation and explorations. And finally, I would like to thanks to my colleagues and collaborators and interns for their contributions to the work and I mentioned in this presentation. And uh, here I show this project vibe for the papers, data, model, and the source code. And uh, welcome to visit our web page and uh, try the source code and uh, try the models there. And uh, here is my talk and thank you for your attention. Yeah. All right, thanks for Dr. Tong gave uh, an impressive uh, presentation.
and we have a few time for a few questions. So, so I think all the audience can put your message on the online stream or like the AG webinar session in the Bilibili or things, any questions? All right, so at first I have a few questions. Uh, so, so now the virtual reality, we represent the 3D using the VR. So mm -hmm. by the way, all, now we can reconstruct our 3D contents for many, many different ways. Uh, for example, in, in real time, like the RGBD camera or a uh, dual camera or simple uh, 2D images to, from 2D to 3D. So, mm -hmm. but uh, the qualities and uh, also the computational resources consumption is quite different. Mm -hmm. So from the quality and the, the stream, so what should be an, the next uh, thing will be applied in the virtual reality for the recovery step? Oh, recovery step, you mean the recovery the three content from the real world, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I personally, it, let me say, I, I think the, I personally is very interested in the recent progress on the nerve or the, or the neural readings field. The, 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 the reason is that if you look at the nerve works, and if you don't really want the, or how can I say, ground truth 3D reconstructions or 3D shapes, for example, if you want to some manufacturing things, definitely you need the 3D reconstruction. But if you only want to put it in some virtual world, I want to show it or visualize it. I think the nerve provide a really, really good representations for both appearance and, uh, and the rust shapes there and provide really realistic high quality result. Here. Of course, there are still a lot of issues that, such as uh, uh, rendering cost there, memory cost there. But I still, I think that people are making really rapid progress to, to, to solve these problems. On the other hand, if you look at recent really great work at the news works, and based on this nerve representations, if you change it to the surface sound distance functions, you can really get a, a, how can I say, I would like to say the amazing result for 3D reconstructions. I, when I look at the result there, I say, oh, that's impossible if we use any existing 3D construction way to do this works. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really excited about it and say, that will be a really, really great way to do the 3D construction. And another way, as I mentioned here, very interesting is what I call the 3D construction by discrimination or 3D learning by discriminations. So this again mm -hmm. framework provide another way is that if I don't have a lot of image on one object there, right? But if I have a lot of image of one object class, such as the apple, and if I have some fruits there, right? Still by collecting this image and train uh, generative models, I still can get a lot of 3D models and relatively 3D representations can generate a very realistic image of the different objects in the class. That provide a totally new way for, for, for me. So, so yeah, yeah. So I think these two approach are, are really, really promising and may solve a lot of existing problems we face in the past uh, decades, I think, yeah. Sure, that's great. Thanks for your answer. Yeah. So any other questions? So if we don't have any questions, so we can move to the next session. Sure, thanks. Sure. All right.